Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Willy's Wheels. I hope you're doing well. Now today in this episode, we're gonna be answering the question, am I hot because summer has finally decided to arrive at the end of August here in England, or because of the joy and love that sits deep in my heart for this, the Hunter 350 from Royal Enfield? Well, let's find out, shall we? Now, before we get into the review and uh, my thoughts on this bike, my experience with it, I just want to say a big thank you to Royal Enfield Europe for providing me with this motorcycle for this review and also some other content. If you want to see some of the content I got with this bike, head over to my Instagram page. It's willies underscore wheels. Uh, I've got lots of other bikes there, including my own Triumph Scrambler and uh, lots of adventures have been happening this summer. So it'd be great to see you over there if you're on Instagram. And just before we get into the stats, I've got to say, when they said I was receiving this bike on loan, I wasn't that excited. Um, this is a motorcycle that on paper doesn't really appeal to me, if I'm being totally honest. And let me tell you, spoiler alert, I was so wrong. <laughs> this, has, uh, this has completely changed my perspective and opinion of small capacity bikes. First cylind single cylinder bike that I've ridden. Uh, and you'll have to stick around for the whole video. I'll tell you exactly why, uh, including some of the cons of this motorcycle, because of course, nothing is perfect. Um, but let's get into some stats. So the Hunter 350 is the lightweight sibling of the Classic 350 and the Meteor 350. They all share this single cylinder 350cc engine, which puts out 20 horsepower. It's got five gears. It's all very unremarkable, but we'll find out a little bit later when we go for a ride. That actually isn't the case. It's very fun, very fun motorcycle to ride. The frame and geometry is different from the other bikes. Uh, it's got a shorter wheelbase. It's got a steeper rake angle on the forks here and it's also lighter than the other two. So it's 181 kilograms, which is incredibly light. And to be honest, it feels almost like you're riding a, uh, a push bike with a big engine. It really is super light, super flickable, and very responsive on the steering, which we'll cover a lot more later. Another difference with the Hunter 350 is the front wheel. Uh, Royal Enfield have gone for a 17 inch front wheel, which is a first for them. And it's also smaller than the Meteor and the Classic. So that's quite a big difference here for the Hunter. Most importantly, and I think what really makes this bike special is it's incredibly affordable. Uh, I'll put the current price up here for the UK. Obviously it might change around the world, but this is not an expensive motorcycle. And it also, it doesn't feel like a cheap motorcycle either. The appointments are all very nice. This is a lovely black design and the colorways are also uh, really nice to look at. There's not much that you'd really want to change from factory other than maybe tidying up the big lights and, and things like that, which is pretty standard for motorcycle owners these days. Now, I think the Royal Enfield team have done a great job designing this bike. I think uh, when it's parked up on the side of the road, it has a lovely stance and look. Uh, and while we're here, I'll show you actually, it also doesn't look too small uh, when you, a big dude like me is straddling it. So I'm six foot three and uh, somewhat of a concern with smaller bikes is it makes the rider look like Donkey Kong, <laughs> this giant Hulk on top. But um, actually the proportions are, are really quite nice. Length of the handlebars is lovely. The seat feels comfortable. And uh, it's kind of that classic Bonnie style upright riding position, um, which kind of feels like the quintessential motorcycling riding position, I think. And they've done a great job. Apparently, when they're designing this, they looked back through old vintage Royal Enfields and copied, copied the shape of the frame and, and elements like the tank and stuff. So it has a kind of a retro timeless feel while also having uh, modern appointments. Speaking of that, let's get a little bit closer and have a look at the switch gear and the controls and stuff. The Hunter 350 is a simple bike. It's got everything you need to get from A to B, wherever that might be, uh, but it hasn't got any of those fancy flourishes. You kind of get used to on premium bikes and much more expensive bikes, but that's okay. What you do get is a single clock with your mileage, a nice sweep there. Uh, you've got miles per hour, kilometers per hour, um, and you have a very simple digital display in the middle. Something that is nice for a bike of this price is you've got a gear indicator. Within the digital display, you've got your trip counter, an odometer, and that's basically it. It's, it's very simple and a nice digital fuel gauge. It's not distracting, it's very clean, and it gives you all of the information that you need when you're on the road, which I think is particularly important um, for a bike like this. For new riders, this might be your first big bike, and you don't really want lots of things flashing up at you, menus and options and things like that. Absolutely no complaints from me. And something that I do love is you have a physical key <laughs> and you've got a steering lock right there. So you can just lock away, key's got somewhere to live. It's great. 
I don't think you need anything else. On the left-hand side, you've got your headlight control, indicators, horn, and to cycle through your trip on the digital display, there's a button here. Um, and the controls feel fine. They're not particularly impressive or luxurious, but equally they don't feel like they're gonna snap off in your hand, so. And then on the right-hand side, you have your starter switch and a hazard switch there. From the spec sheet then, this wasn't a bike I was particularly excited about. Um, coming from a 1200 Scrambler, I didn't think it was going to rock my world or, you know, make me want to sell up and get a 350. How wrong was I? <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough how much I love riding this bike. Uh, so with that being said, here's some of my favorite things about the Hunter 350. Now I think the Hunter 350 sweet spot and the thing I love the most about this bike is how well it performs in town. Because of that shorter wheelbase and the steeper rake angle, the steering is so direct and precise. You can weave in and out of traffic really easily and confidently and considering what type of bike this is and what type of market it's for um, it's absolutely performing up to expectations I'd say really really good it struck me straight away when getting on this bike just how nimble how nimble it is especially compared to the bigger bikes I've ridden um, and I almost likened it to that feeling when, you, when you're when you learning to ride, you've got a mountain bike, something with really chunky tyres, and you, you get on a road bike for the first time, push bike, and it feels so direct and intentional and a little bit twitchy if you're not used to it, but that's what it feels like. It feels like that graduation into, you know, 23C, 700C tyres. And that's part in combination with other elements that make this bike so, uh, it's so elating. It reminds me of being 15 and ripping around with my friends on, on push bikes. It's that feeling of like, oh, I would go anywhere. We can nip in and out here. It's not sluggish. It's not hot or heavy. Brilliant. It's also pretty quick to accelerate. We're already up to 50 miles an hour. I can pull out into traffic with confidence. The other thing that's really impressed me is just how good the brakes are. Look at that. Especially the rear brake, actually. Um, it's really effective on the back. You've got a two-pot disc on the front and a one-pot disc on the back. Um, and they're really, really good. They stop well from high speeds. They don't seem to fade and lose power uh, abnormally quickly when they get hot. Really, really impressive. Now something that was actually quite a surprise for me is how happy this bike is at quicker speeds. We're in fifth gear, we're doing 60 down the A3 and the bike feels planted and you feel confident on top of it. It doesn't feel out of place here on a dual carriageway, a three lane. It feels absolutely fine. I feel, I don't feel vulnerable at all. And changing lanes is, is not a problem. You've got really nice visibility with the upright seating position. So anything up to 60 miles an hour, I feel totally comfortable. Of course, I don't have the extra power now to get around the car in front. I really have to work up to it and just lay the power in. 
It'll probably take me about 30 seconds to get past this guy. All right, let's go. Full throttle, fifth gear. No worries, up to 70, easy. Now, one thing I absolutely love is this engine. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is the first single cylinder bike I've ever ridden. I can now see what the crack is all about. They're phenomenal. This engine has so much character and just loves to be revved and revved and revved. It's, uh, it's, it's intoxicating. I think this, is, this beating heart, this thumping heart of this bike is, I think, a big reason as to why I've fallen in love with it, really. It's, uh, it's just something that just loves, loves to be given revs and uh, loves to always go. It doesn't get hot. My legs aren't burning like on my Scrambler. It's, um, it's charming. And at a certain RPM, everything vibrates and gives you a little butt massage, which I think is just fantastic. <laughs> I mentioned at the beginning of the video, but I think the styling of this bike is absolutely spot on. 17 inch front wheel gives it quite an aggressive stance. Um, feels very street focused and even the exhaust while sticking to all the emission rules and things um, I think it's great If I were to buy it, of course, I'd probably tidy up the uh, front indicators because they're, they're really quite big But this is a wonderful base and I've already seen some some really really cool uh, Modified versions of these there's a couple of scramblers and a tracker out there That are coming out that the people are doing some great work So there's obviously a good a good platform to start with for the modifiers of the community there's a guy over there, I just watched him play the worst golf shot I think I've ever seen. <laughs> anyway, back to the bike. So if that's a summary of the good, what about the bad? Now, unfortunately this isn't the perfect bike, of course, there are some bad points. Um, I think the key one for me is in the suspension. Now the Hunter has a stiffer suspension setup, I believe, than the Meteor and the Classic. Uh, however, my main problem comes from being a heavier rider, I'm about 100 kilos, and when you're riding more spiritedly, uh, I can just feel the suspension wallowing a bit, and um, I've even had it bottom out a couple of times on the rear, uh, which isn't great, and I'm not, I'm not taking this on a track day, doing 100 miles an hour plus, but uh, it's just when you get into it a bit more and you're really enjoying yourself, you start to feel the limitations of the suspension there. And a second, Secondary point to that is uh, with pillions I think the engine and the suspension are going to struggle a little bit if you're regularly riding two up or you've got loads of luggage or something I don't think this is the bike for you Try something like the Himalayan the Triumph Tiger if you're doing touring uh, BMW GS of course the Tenere from Yamaha Honda Yamaha I can't remember the Tenere 700 something like that much more capable touring machine This isn't that in town single rider uh, and particularly in the emerging markets where perhaps you have lighter riders on average um, This thing is gonna be absolutely fine. You're not gonna have a problem. I'm really kind of Really trying to find some negatives here. Look at this beautiful pub mm. Now of course one downside with a bike like this a naked bike a retro bike is there's no wind protection really at all um, There's no fairings around the legs. So my knees are getting wind and of course, you can probably hear, I'm hoping you can hear my voice. You can hear the wind buffeting into the helmet. In a warm country, I don't think that's a problem. But I can imagine in winter, if you're doing a lot of, um, of kind of highway miles like this, it's not, it's not pleasant. You're gonna wanna look at the Himalayan, for example, with a, with a big screen and hand guards and stuff like that. But I think if you know what you're getting with a bike like this, you're not getting a touring bike uh, for short stints on the motorway. It's absolutely fine. So my friends, it is time to end this video with the Hunter 350. Uh, as you can probably tell, I've loved it. <laughs> this is a very compelling motorcycle and uh, it's definitely made me question why I have such a big, heavy, hot bike uh, when you can have this much fun on a 350. So well done, Royal Enfield. Thank you again for the loan of the bike. Um, let me know what you think of the bike down below, if you've ridden it before. Uh, it's been really interesting, actually, since making content 
around this motorcycle uh, over on Instagram. I've had quite a few chats with people who've just bought one or have actually had a similar experience to me where maybe they underestimated this bike. And um, since riding it, it's completely changed their opinion and they've had a great time. So it's food for thought for me. I'm really looking forward to trying some other motorcycles in this class. Um, and really for this price, I'm not sure there's anything better. Of course, Triumph have just announced their 400cc Scrambler and the road-based motorcycle, which I'm really excited to try and I can't wait to see more of uh, coming next year. So if you want to see a video on that, uh, hit the subscribe button. Also hit the bell icon because you'll be notified when I finally upload the video. It's clear why this bike is so popular over in India and other emerging markets. Um, I can just see it fitting in perfectly into those environments. But I think what surprised me the most is just how compelling it is for a UK rider. If you're in an urban city or suburban area, um, or if you're doing any kind of riding other than touring or always have a pillion, you don't need anything else. <laughs> this is a great bike. <laughs> so I really would recommend uh, taking one out for a test ride if you can. It's definitely made me question why I have a hot, heavy 1200cc motorcycle at home when you can have just as much fun on this. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Willie's Wheels as much as I have making it. <laughs> if you have, uh, hit the like button and subscribe if you're not. It really helps my channel grow. Um, and let me know what you think of the Hunter 350. As always, stay safe and enjoy yourselves. Bye.